we will see how that pans out for Trevor. And here is the Huda Pegasus. This car is amazing. It is see Leo Block driving it as a tribute to her dad. This is, it's giving me goosebumps right now. This is what this race is all about. This is what racing in general is all about. It's just making statements like this, going out there and taking one of the coolest race cars ever and putting 16-year-old Leo Block behind the wheel to drive up Pikes Peak. I think even even more uh, emotional there is the Ken Block on the, above the door there. And Leah climbing behind the wheel to bring it up the mountain. And uh, it's a special moment, I'm sure, for the family as, as well. Um, Again, I spent a lot of time at Grid Life, and, and Ken was was kind of in our circles as well. So uh, it's just uh, what a what a great way to end, and a, a, a symbolic end to the hill climb here in just a couple of minutes' time, as uh, Ben Ryan continues his climb up to the top of Pikes Peak. Just waiting to see what Paul does in that first segment, and I know we saw a couple really fast times there. I'd expect something in the 140 something range. It's going to be quick, no matter what. The anticipation's killing me there. So we're watching Ben Ryan on the screen, but our eyes glue to 146, 296, section one. And that is going to be a pretty quick time. Uh, that should land him right in the midst of that open wheel battle. So we'll see what time he can make up in, uh, in sections two, three, and four. But that would put him on the podium if he can maintain that pace through the rest of the run. No, that, that's a really quick time there. And knowing Paul, as he said, he kind of is a little bit conservative off the, off the bat, gets a figure for what the car is going to do. These next three splits, especially those top two, that's where he really shines. He's so comfortable and so confident, much like Reese Millen in that top split alone. Um, I think he's, he may make up some time there for sure on the, some, of those, uh, some of those guys in his class. The Huda Pegasus roars to life, and the door will shut with the number 43 on the side. And in just a moment, it will begin a symbolic trek up the 12 and a half mile, 156 turn course. And there is the green flag for Leah Block as she ascends America's Mountain. And it's a tribute run, but you know Leah's a race car driver. She's not holding back. No, she she, did she hold very back. clearly was sending <laughs> yeah. that thing into the, the uh, first couple of corners there. This is this is just so cool to see. Uh, what, what a great story for her to be behind the wheel of that car and for the builder of that car to say how, she just dropped right in it. It just fit her perfectly, and uh, she's been uh, like a puzzle piece into that machine. So that's really, really neat. Ben Ryan continuing to just challenge the course with this mini. It doesn't sound happy, but it's, it's getting up there. That little thing is working hard. He's through the third split. We should see that time here any moment. He uh, he made it further than he did in his first attempt there before that red flag. And now he's just uh, a couple minutes away from getting to the top of this mountain. Yeah, Got to keep that thing revved up real high to get all the, the, the torque out of it there at the high end of the RPM range. But Ben Ryan going to give it all he's got in that time attack one category. And he, even he mentioned uh, getting the call to, to jump in this uh, a couple of weeks ago, really, and to, to fill in in a car that, uh, again, really is uh, outclassed as far as the, the competition goes. But the experience, the run up the mountain for his first time, just get a time on the board, come back next year, and try to knock it down. And so we're waiting for Paul Dahlenbach's second split time. It should be any moment now. Uh, as you mentioned, more and more comfortable the longer the run goes on. And we should see these times just continue to trip and uh, be be very, very quick. So uh, continuing the climb up the mountain for Paul Dahlenbach and more, including Ben Ryan, who's almost done a 351-890 in section number three. So uh, Ben Ryan almost there. Final section in the peak in the horizon. So uh, Paul Dahlenbach. Making so his way. Go ahead. I just got word from one of his crew members that he pulled off in Brownbush. Uh, so no. Unfortunately, it sounds like Paul is not going to get to the summit. He had such a fast first split. Oh. Um, they've been battling mechanical issues and electrical issues and you name it with that car this year. Um, man. That's frustrating. That's frustrating. Again, and Paul has known both sides of the coin there. Uh, again, I documented his, his uh, story the last 30 years. Winning many times and only a handful of times not making it up the mountain, but it looks like it will be the latter this year. And that is a frustrating way to end for a driver that is as competitive and as, uh, and is as dedicated to this race as Paul is. But Paul Dahlenbach in that open wheel category will not make it to the top of the mountain. This mini, though, Ben Ryan, he's given it all he's got to get this mini to the top. And he's not that far away. Just a minute or so away now. Granted, that's probably in something that's making more than... Uh, that, that thing's got to be making under 100 horsepower now. It's just working so hard just to get up all these steep grades. And, uh, I mean, we, we heard it coming into Devil's Playground, which is 1,000 feet lower than the actual summit. So it's going to be... Uh 
it's going to be interesting to see <laughs> what his feedback is once he gets back down <laughs> to the bottom. I'm sure he's going to go, man, this thing just had no power. <laughs> well, the, the, the challenging thing about cl hill climbs is that the power goes away as you climb, but the weight doesn't. And <laughs> even though the Mini isn't really all that heavy of a car, uh, it's still dragging uh, equivalently more uh, as you climb up the mountainside and, and make it all the way to the, the peak at Pikes Peak. So Paul Dallenbach was going to be the last timed, uh, I guess, timed competitive run, classified run, so he will not make it. But Leah Block still making her way up in that uh, very special tribute to her dad in the Huna Pegasus. Uh, and, of course, uh, such an impactful figure, not just uh, in, in the ways that are obvious, but just in motorsport in general. Ken Block had such a huge impact, and that loss was felt across the nation and the world. And uh, for Leah to be behind the wheel of this and piloting this number 43 up the mountain, it has to be special for everyone. It's certainly special for us to watch and to be a part of. But there she is, Huna Pegasus, carving its way through the Colorado Rockies en route to 14,110 feet. It's just such a good-looking car, and it's, it's purpose-built for this race. We talked a bit, Tim, with BBI earlier, and they've... They put so much thought into every single aspect of this car. It's like you look at it, and it's a total work of art, and it also performs incredibly well. well here comes Ben Ryan in his first attempt at climbing Pikes Peak. The Mini is going to make it. One more corner to cross the stripe over the bumps, and he's done it. Ben Ryan brings the Mini across the line. Well done in attempt number two after getting turned around. The little Mini that could across the stripe <laughs> at the top of Pikes Peak. And then back to Leah Block, bringing this Huna Pegasus machine up to the top. This is a marvel of engineering. But for Leah Block, uh, young in her career, it has so many things left to do. But to, just to participate in this, even in, in this uh, exhibition level, just to, uh, to put that feather in your cap, I think, is, is such a special moment. And, uh, and you know, put this on the calendar for next year because I, I think she'll be back. I think she'll be back. We've been saying it all day. You come up here one time and you're hooked, whether it be as a spectator or especially as a driver. Um, Leo's got to be having such a good time driving that car. And for your first time on the mountain, it's probably a good thing that this isn't a timed official run <laughs> yes. because that car is a monster and it would scare almost anybody, um, a seasoned driver, let alone a rookie. Yeah, and she's doing a great job making her way up the hill right now as the last car to run up the mountain here at the 101st running of the Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb presented by Gran Turismo with coverage by Mobile One. Uh, this has just been an exceptional day as we close this out with this symbolic climb up to 14,110 feet. And the pictures, the photographs, the footage that will come out of this run up the mountain, I think, are going to transcend not just uh, this year, but decades and maybe centuries as this event continues into the future. Uh, it is a historic event, 101 years in, no signs of slowing down. And uh, again, as you mentioned, Spencer Penrose, if he could see what this has become and, and, and how special this has become for so many families, for, for so many motorsports fans to watch this, uh, this run, uh, I think he would be very, very proud. Oh, he'd be thrilled. I mean, Indianapolis 500, the only race in America older than this one, and it is equally as iconic. There is nothing like it. We talked to Paul earlier, and he said, this is my Indy 500. He never got to get to that level like some of his family, but it's, it's still one of the biggest races in the world. And I think if you ask some of the drivers here, uh, this is the level as far as, as motorsports goes. Uh, you know, there's uh, only a handful that can, uh, that can get to Indy for a variety of reasons, so you're going to be measured against that stick, but here when it's, uh, it's open to so many people and so many drivers from around the world, you're measuring yourself against the best of the best of the best from a huge variety of motorsports. Uh, we, we documented road racing, drivers from Le Mans and the 24 Hours of Daytona and Sebring, oval racing, dirt racing, rally racing, a rally cross, uh, basically everything. I'm sure there's pilots that have raced planes or something, boat race. I'm, they're probably in there somewhere. It's just... Uh, it is it is a racer's event, and I think that's that's the biggest takeaway for me is if you win this event, you've you've won uh, against a whole bunch of people that have experience from every corner of the motorsport world. No, absolutely, and you you cement yourself in history not only just running this race, but especially if you can be one of those guys that goes out there and throws down a time fast enough to win this event, whether it be a class win or especially that king of the mountain, you are officially in the history books as a winner of one of the most iconic motorsports events in the world. Leah Block ascending above the tree line on her mission to complete Pikes Peak. Heading through the hairpins now, this car, again, 
All the phones are out taking photos. All the cameras snapping pictures. And, and if, if all the satellites uh, surrounding the Earth could all focus their energy for one minute and take a picture of this car, I bet they would. Uh, it's just going to be an unbelievable moment. No, and as you just said, I mean, the photos from this event are always amazing, but this car in particular on this very instance is going to get so many amazing photographs of it. And with the amount of snow that we have up top, it's kind of unlike anything I've ever seen in my years past. There's more snow up there, which leads to a really, really cool backdrop, especially we were talking about it looks like Mars up there. <laughs> um, those photos are going to be awesome. I mean, these camera shots that we have overlooking the road in that top section alone, it's just amazing. It's such a cool thing to see. It, it, if you grayscaled that image, it would look like we're driving on the moon right now. And we're pro probably about halfway there, but based <laughs> on how far we're climbing up, helicopters flying around. I didn't even know helicopters could fly this high, to be totally honest, before this weekend. I mean, 14,110 feet. Uh, one of the, the factoids here uh, for, for the pilots that are watching, you can't fly above 13,000 without oxygen legally for beyond a certain amount of time. So you're at 14,100. You're up there. And, uh, and again, that... It's been the, the goal today is to climb this mountain and assert dominance uh, in your category against a field of competitors that, for some, this is their entire life. 364 days of planning for one day of competition. And she's getting close to the top now, just a handful of corners left. And she's not holding back. She's, she's definitely getting what she can out of that car, obviously still respecting the fact that uh, she's not being timed. She is a rookie. But uh, she's, she's not holding back. This is so fun to watch. And I'll bet uh, that every moment that passes in that car, she is taking mental notes for future runs up this mountain. Because every time you make this run, if you're not taking in data with your eyes, with your ears, uh, with the seat of the pants feel, uh, I think you're missing an opportunity. And she is not going to miss that opportunity to learn in a car like this, in a moment like this, on a hill like this. I think this is she's going to take in everything she can. Yeah, no, this is invaluable. I mean, you take all the information and all that mental data from this one run, and as she she's going to come back. We all know we're going to see <laughs> yeah. Leah Block up here on Pikes Peak again. She's going to take all of that mental preparation and all this data she's collected herself and come back better, stronger, ready to hopefully fight for a win. Imagine if we have a Leah Block King of the Mountain up here one day. I, I can imagine it. Uh, it's, it's a very clear imagination, I think. Again, as I mentioned, there are names that have become synonymous with this mountain and uh, the block name in general, synonymous with motorsports, and uh, there's no reason it, it couldn't or won't be synonymous with the Pikes Peak Hill Climb in the future. And uh, we talked with Melissa, you know, one of the organizers of this event, that the past, the present, and the future are all represented here, not only in the cars, not only in the builds, but in the people that are here making it happen behind the scenes, in the cars, working on the cars, um, you know, marshalling the, the, the whole event. It is really a, it transcends time, this, this event, and I think that's the, the thing we'll remember most. But Leah Block, the final few corners through Olympic in a Herculean climb to the top with Ken Block on the roof, but Leah behind the wheel. The Huna Pegasus will climb to the top of Pikes Peak, 14,110 feet, and the climb is complete. That's awesome. You hear the roar.